In this video, I'm going to show you how to download free images from freepick.com and how to credit an author. And I'm going to round up this video with how to design a magazine cover like this. I will use Adobe Photoshop and CorelDRAW to achieve this design. So that is to say, there are a lot to learn through this video. At the end of this video, you will know how to download free images from freepick.com and you will know how to credit an author as well. Also, you will learn how to create a mask effect with photoshop and lastly how to design a magazine cover with corel draw 2020 so make sure you stick around to the end of this video hello you guys my name is dennis welcome and welcome back to another video if this is your first time here and you want to learn graphic design and how to make creative designs start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you get notified when i upload a new video like this one so in one of our double tip friday i promised to make this video based on our previous discussion on plagiarism so for that i decided to make this video to show you how to get images and how to credit an author to avoid plagiarizing if you did not watch the video i am referring to i'm going to link it up on the description so you can watch the video after watching this one don't forget to like and share this video if you find it helpful and comment your questions regarding this video i'll be so happy to answer all your questions first thing first we are about to design a fashion magazine cover and before starting a magazine cover design you will need an image for your design so let's go to our browser and get an image for the magazine so this is my browser and basically i use google chrome to browse so if you're using any other browser apart from this no problem we are on the same page all you have to do is to log into your browser and search for freepick.com and open up the website then the website opens up just like what you can see on the screen and next thing you want to do is to adjust the filter to free remember we are working with free images and you click on photos we are searching for photos so you activate free and photos if you need a psd file you can activate psd vector or icon as well but since we are looking for a photo we activate just free and photo so that is okay next thing you need to do is to search here for fashion model okay actually we are designing a fashion magazine so i'm searching for a fashion model that will fit the magazine design so these are pictures i've seen here i'm going to search uh for the picture that fits my design okay so you know as a designer you should easily spot a picture that fits your design idea so well so i'm um, okay i'm clicking on the next page so i see other pictures that will fit my design idea basically i easily spot pictures that fit my design so fast okay um can't find any picture yet okay i think this picture will be perfect for my design so i'm going to click on this picture and actually the picture is free because we adjusted the filter to free photos and i'm going to click on download and click on free download now remember i told you guys we need to learn how to credit an auto and this is the link we need to use to attribute the auto so all you have to do is to click on copy and attribute so you click here and you see copy it successful next thing you want to do is to open a notepad where you paste this link so once you are done with your design you use that link to credit the author so i'm going to click here to open up a new folder and okay click here open up the new folder and create a new document text document then open up the text document and paste this link here so this is the link where we we'll use to credit the author you can save this text document and use it 
when we want to use it so now that we have the image for our design and the link we will use to credit the author for this design the next thing we are going to do is to open up our photoshop and create a layer mask effect so let's go to photoshop so this is the picture that was downloaded from freepick.com and the next thing i'm going to do is to take this picture to photoshop and let's add some editing effect to this picture the first thing i'll do is to duplicate this picture by pressing ctrl j on your keyboard so we have two layers of this particular picture and next up i'm going to select all these parts of this picture using your lasso tool polygonal lasso tool here or you can simply press L on your keyboard to activate the polygonal lasso tool and I'm going to zoom into this picture this way and all you have to do is to select the visible part of this picture just like this I'm going to select here now the effect I need to do does not matter the type of selection all you have to do is just to make sure that the part that is on the body of the picture is well selected but outside the picture you can just roughly sketch that okay you can always press your space bar on your keyboard to move to activate the hand tool and move your picture to any direction you want i will just do a kind of rough sketch just for the success of this tutorial okay so i'm going to select here remember i'm selecting only the visible parts of this picture that is our skin a face and all the visible parts of this picture good and next thing i'm going to do is to select this side as well now when you press shift on your keyboard when your polygonal lasso tool is activated it changes this cursor to plus which means you want to add selection to the first selection which you have made okay let me leave the shift key and you see how it looks like if i press alternate and you see that minus sign to minus the selection so i'm going to press shift to add selection all i'm going to do is to select here like this and okay select here so that is perfect and i'm going to add selection to these other visible parts of the picture as well press shift on your keyboard and add this selection as well okay uh, my selection is a kind of rough selection when doing yours make sure you are perfect in it make sure you do it very well press shift again to add selection here as well you can always press your space bar to activate the hand tool okay Now, why I am not all that bothered about the background because my background is uh, white and black. It, my background is of a um, gray nature. So, since I am going to add saturation to this picture, I'm not bothered about the background. Okay, all my selection is done. All the selection is done. Like what you are seeing here, the selection is done. So, I'm going to add feathers to this a little too percent pixel is okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to click on this background layer and click on image click on adjustment and click on hue or saturation all you have to do is to bring down the saturation way down to minus 100 and press ok and the saturation changes the picture to grayscale that is black and white so all i'm going to do now is to add click on the layer the first the top layer and click on layer max remember to press alternate on your keyboard before doing this course we want to review the layer remember black height and white reviews so we want to add a white layer max so press alternate and click on add layer max so we have this white layer max that review the background layer because white reviews while black height if we were to add a black layer max by just clicking on the layer max it will hide that background but we want to reveal it so this is how it looks like this is how our picture looks like and that is the kind of effect i need because the area we are actually emphasizing on is our outfit that is why i want the outfit to be well colored and that of her body should be black and white and that is the effect and i believe you now know how to make this layer max effect how to max a photo and that is just it next thing i'm going to do is to save this picture so we take it to corel draw actually this design will be done with corel draw so i'm going to save this picture so we take it to 
Corel Draw. All I'm going to do now is to press on File and click on uh, Save As and you select the location where you want the file to be. Actually, I will save it on the original folder. All I have to do is to change this to JPEG. Okay, that's the file format I want to save in and you can click on Save. Okay, no, uh, I have to add one more letter here to change the file name. Okay, maximum quality. Okay, so the file is safe. So I'm going to open up my Corel Draw. Let's move to Corel Draw. So this is Corel Draw 2020. First thing I'm going to do is to click on New Document, and this dialog box pops up. Then I'm going to set my size to A4 because we want to work with A4 size and that is the front cover of the magazine and the next thing I'm going to do is to set my unit to inches and that is perfect remember portrait orientation it should be on portrait okay 300 dpi resolution is okay and the primary color mode I'll be working with is RGB basically I'm not printing this document it's just for this particular design so I will leave it with RGB don't forget that you save your design with CMYK color mode that is if you are printing but since it's not going to be printed that is why I'm going to work with RGB so I'm going to leave it there and click on OK and this is the workspace we'll be working on next thing I'm going to do is to double click on the rectangle tool and this is it next up I'm going to right click here to take off this outline on this shape so we have this background without outline okay click on the pick tool to activate your pick tool then click on white to give it a white background then I'm going to import the picture which we have already worked on into my Corel draw so this is the picture we actually made some editing effect on with Photoshop yeah so I'm going to power click this picture inside this shape right click on the picture and click on power click inside and click here to power click the picture inside the shape now someone said I like power clipping pictures in my design and that I should limit my way of power clipping picture okay there are good reasons why you should there are good reasons why you should always power clip your pictures basically I told you guys I power clip pictures and my backgrounds but my texts are always on top of my designs and there are great reasons why I do that to avoid destructing my picture or making my design to look heavy on the background so I power clip pictures and backgrounds inside my design and my text on top of the design that is why I like power clipping my pictures so next thing I'm going to do is to press alternate on the keyboard and click on this picture and adjust the position of this picture to this then you can resize the picture like this and just try to position this picture very well on a at a very nice place good and i'm going to open up my power clip click on the shape and click on edit if you are working with uh, any other version of corel draw you can always press control and click on the shape to open up the power clip but if you are working with corel draw 2020 simply click on edit here to open up this power clip so you can do this editing click on the transparency tool and press shift on your keyboard and add this transparency here because this picture is too short and the background can't cover the whole page so i'm going to fill the whole page with this gray color so i'm going to fill it this way perfect so you can see how the black has hidden parts of this picture like this as you can see here that is how it looks like on the background so i'm going to close my power clip and fill this background with this particular uh, color on the background that comes with this picture so i'm going to click on my color eyedrop tool and pick the exact color that is here and fill it on the background so you see it fills the whole background with the same gray color next thing i'm going to do is to type in this text okay and i'll adjust this now there is this particular typeface that has been used and overused by different graphic designers when designing a magazine cover like this one and that typeface is known as VOP. it's just the same name you are seeing on the text itself so i'm going to type in the typeface here okay so this is the typeface that has been used by different designers on magazine if you see different magazine designs this is the exact typeface 
you will see and that is what we are using here click on the shape tool to adjust the tracking of this text like this perfect then you adjust the text size now there is one thing i like designers to do whenever they are designing to guard their design and that is when you work with guideline so i'm going to create a guideline for this design so you see how it goes now you click on your ruler bar and bring in this particular ruler here that is the guideline and do the same to this other side and do the same to this other side now what you should know is that your guideline should be at least half inch away from the edge of your design now i'm not measuring my uh, my uh, edge of the design i'm just setting my guidelines based on the fact that i have the idea on this already but when doing yours all you have to do is to create a shape and make sure that your shape is half inch you can set the size here 0.5 inch by 0.5 inch so this is the shape okay let me set this 0.5 inch and press shift and click on your shape and press r you can see the guideline is on this shape you bring it to this other side press shift and select the text and press t you can see the guideline is almost at the same size bring it to the this other side press shift and press r okay sorry l to align to the left then you set your guideline bring it to the bottom as well press shift and select the design and press b then you adjust it so that is how to create guidelines for your design now what is the work of this guideline it will help you to make a design without making element in your design to cross the border and go close to the edge i've always talked about trimming whenever you are done with your design you should create these guidelines to avoid your text being cut off at the finishing part of this job now most designers do disobey this rule they don't create guidelines for their designs this guideline will help you a lot now every element of your design should be inside the guideline and the picture does not really matter you can see where this hand is i have to shift it inside but most times the pictures do not really matter pictures unless the most important part of the picture is shown on the design then every other part do not really matter all you have to do is to make sure that your text and every other element are inside this guideline so i'm going to click on this text and bring it close to the guideline here it's perfect press shift and select the shape and press c this is very good i can enlarge this text again okay press shift and select this and press c to centralize this is perfect and the next thing i'm going to do is to adjust my picture again press alternate on your keyboard and click on the picture itself so it selects the picture inside the power clip now what happens when you press alternate and click on a picture it selects the picture inside the shape itself since you can't select the picture directly when you click directly you press alternate and click on the picture to select the picture inside the power clip just as what you can see so i'm going to adjust it again and bring it closer here so you can see the hand is now inside the guideline it's okay and it's very perfect let me make a little adjustment again by enlarging my picture again i think i'm okay with this next up i'm going to create this particular effect like this create this shape using your rectangle tool and give it um, a gray color like 30 percent black and right click here to take off the outline and use your transparency tool to create this transparency here press shift while doing this so you remain on a straight line you can see how it looks like but when i take off my hand from the shift key it moves to any direction but pressing shift will help you to remain on a straight line so you create this effect like this and this looks perfect next thing i'm going to do is to bring in this shape into my design right click and click on power clip inside then you click on the shape so this shape comes inside the power clip press alternate and click on the shape so you can select the shape inside the power clip and you bring it to this direction click again to activate these curves around the shape and rotate it this way and this is perfect and i'm going to duplicate this by pressing ctrl d to duplicate this shape and you bring it down to this other side click on mirror horizontally and mirror vertically you can see how it looks then you bring it down here 
okay let me adjust the position again so this is okay and perfect and i'm going to click on this press alternate to select this again click on transparency tool and change your match mode to overlay you can see how it looks like and that is how it should be so this looks better i'm going to bring it down here again and this remains this way next thing i'm going to do is to change the color of g u n e and i'm going to create a shape first like this and click on my color eyedrop to select this brown color here this shade of brown here on this back and fill it on this shape now why i had to fill it here because i want this color to appear here as you can see here so i can now delete this shape because i have the brown color because i'll be working with it on this design so i'm going to double click on my text and select gue and give it this color this is how it looks like it looks perfect right next thing i'm going to do is to type this i'm going to type okay i'm going to break this text like this then I'm going to change the typeface to Vogue as well using my shape to adjust the line spacing like this that is okay bring it down here and adjust the text size like this and position it here that is perfect I'm going to select fashion and give it this brown color as well so that is it and the next thing I'm going to do is to type in this as well okay this is the text and i'm going to change my typeface to futura i like working with futura basically because it looks very mature and perfect for my design so i'm going to use futura medium and bring it here you can reduce the typeface like this and centralize okay select sweater and make it bold and if possible increase the font size perfect use your shape tool to adjust the line spacing like this then i'm going to change the color of this to brown as well and place it here now when designing your magazine cover you may not have this particular writer but at least you have the idea of how to design a magazine cover and basically the goal of making this design is to show you how to credit an author when designing or when you download stock images online just like this one we did here so i'm going to credit the author after making this design and i'm going to show you how to do it then the next thing i'm going to do is to duplicate this i want to use this same typeface and format to make another type like 15 looks to choose that sorry okay 15 looks to jump start your season i'm going to copy out 15 and make it bold and large just like this use your shape tool to adjust the tracking and give it brown color then you can bring this here place it here and bring this here let me copy out this and paste here then set this to left alignment it's good and this down here so that is okay for this perfect for this so next up, I'm going to add a barcode to this design and I learned that it is very important to add barcodes to your design and the best way to add barcode in your design using Corel Draw 2020. Every other version of Corel Draw may have other arrangement for this. So let me show you how to get this barcode on your Corel Draw 2020. Maybe I'll make a dedicated video on how to make a barcode with your Corel Draw. But for now, let me just show you this. You click on object, you click on insert. You see QR code and you see barcode and validate code. But this is for barcode. But I don't want to go into this right away. I will show you another easy way I discovered to make this barcode. But it is not the best. The best way is to do this one. I'll make a dedicated video on how to create barcodes for your designs. But for now, I'm going to type a random number like this. 
I'll be using this phone number to create a barcode using the simplest method I discovered. I had a font called barcode font. So this font is what I'm going to type here to create this barcode just as you can see here. Don't forget and quote me right. I'm going to make a dedicated video on how to create a barcode. Don't use this method to make barcodes for your designs except you are making a personal design just like what I'm doing right now. Then you can use this method to create your barcode. So I'm going to rotate my barcode like this and bring it here. This is okay and create this shape here and give it white color. Press control page down to send it to the back. It's a, actually a nice position for it. So I'm going to click and reduce this barcode a little. Okay, that is very nice. Next up, I'm going to credit the author of this photo on this design. Let's see how it looks like. Next up, I'm going to credit the author of this photo. All we have to do is to paste the link which we copied on the website freepick.com that we downloaded this picture and paste it here. So I'm going to open up my notepad where I had to paste the link to credit an author. So I'm going to click here to open up this and select the link and copy. Then you click on your text to click here and paste. Ctrl V to paste just like this. So this is the link to this picture which we will use to credit the author. I'm going to change the font to uh, Futura is okay and change the typeface to six points. You don't have to make it a big typeface. It should just be six points. Then you rotate this way. That is perfect and bring it here. This is a perfect place for read. Okay. Six points is okay. Then you shift it down here a little. And Feel this is okay for me. Okay, I think I should bring it down. Bring it down here a little. Um, I think that's a perfect position for it. So this is how to credit an author for a particular image or design. That is just how it goes. Then let's see how our design looks like. So this is the final look of our design. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. I believe you enjoyed this video and learned a lot from this video. I would like you to comment your most interesting parts of this video down the comment and this will encourage me and help me to know this video was helpful to you. And don't forget to like and share this video. If this is your first time watching our videos, kindly subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you get notified when I upload a new video your subscription matters a lot it helps to grow this channel thank you very much for watching this video i'll see you guys next time